Wow, five years of marriage, it has not been an easy journey, but it's been such a life transforming, inspiring, encouraging, and very supportive one. And in this video, I cannot wait to share my experiences with you. Things that I've learned from being a married woman for five solid years. And I hope as you watch this video, you are able to pick some learnings from it to help yourself as you are on the journey of finding love or on the journey of getting married. This video is a must watch. Please watch from the beginning to the end because there is so much packed in here for you to unlock. Hello lovelies, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rita Xiao. I am an educator, a public speaker and the author of your Unstoppable. I also run a non-profit organization called Family Star Africa, which is focused on empowering young women to reach their dreams. In this video, I'll be sharing with you what I have learned in a journey of five years marriage. I hope that watching this video would encourage you, it would inspire you and you would find some learnings in it as you are on the journey of looking for love or getting married. Before I go into the video, I want to use this opportunity to welcome all of you who are my new subscribers. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. Enjoy your stay. I wish you the very best. Always feel free to leave questions in the comments. Any topic you want me to talk about or discuss or share learnings on, please do not hesitate to leave it in the comment section and I will come back to you. I love doing videos that are focused on questions that you have asked and I cannot wait to receive your questions and make great videos for you. If this is your first time on my channel, I also encourage you to please subscribe to this channel because there is so much to be gained from watching my content. A lot to be learned. You do not want to miss it. So do not hesitate to subscribe. The button is right there. Click on it and subscribe. And also, don't forget to turn on your notification bell so that anytime that I post a new video, you will be the first to receive an alert from me. The first thing I've learned in my five years of being married is Marriage is hard work. It is not a kid's play. It is not for faint-hearted people. It is not for lazy people. It is not for people who are not ready to put in efforts. It is for people who are hardworking. So you must be very, very hardworking to be able to, you know, live in a marriage and enjoy the marriage. It is hard work because marriage requires physical energy, it requires mental fortitude, it requires patience, it requires a lot of things that only a hard-working person can give these things. There are times that you wake up and you don't feel like, you know, cleaning your house, putting things in order, making dinner or lunch or, you know, serving the family. There are times that you just wake up feeling like so tired and exhausted, you just don't want to do anything, but you still have to get up on your feet and get the house running. I'm not just saying this for wives, I'm saying this for couples, you the husband and the wife because the sort of marriage I live in is not a kind of marriage where only the woman does the house chores and the man does nothing. We do it all together. I am cooking, he's washing dishes, he's cleaning the house and I am you know, cleaning bathroom toilets. We do almost everything together. As married couples, you have your jobs that are taking your time. You have family that is taking your time. You have children that is taking your time. Responsibilities of the house that is taking your time. So you need to know that it takes a lot of hard work to really make marriage work. If you are the lazy type who wants a very, very soft life, easy life, and do not want, you know, all the bustling and hustling here and there, then marriage is definitely not for you. For marriage to work, you need to put in a lot of efforts. It is not just an event, it is a process. It is a lifelong journey, which requires putting in lots of hours into communicating, into doing the house chores, into taking care of each other, into supporting each other, into loving each other, and into raising your family to be what you want it to be. So, marriage is hard work. I just want you to know that before you decide to take that step of, you know, getting into marriage. Those of you looking for love out there, oh, the thought of, you know, being married is so beautiful. Yeah, 
it is so beautiful but until you get in before you realize how much work it is for you the second thing i've realized is there is always something new to learn about each other you can never know your spouse well enough before you get married so once in the marriage that is where a lot of things begin to come up and you begin to know him or her for who they truly are holistically now you are married living under the same roof you're going to begin to experience the snoring for those who snore you're going to be you know experiencing um, those who put the toilet seat down and those who leave it open these are things that are petty and little about each other you are going to discover you are now going to know the person's temperament thoroughly and into details how quickly does my spouse get angry and how long does he or she holds on to anger these are things that you are going to learn along the way all these times of courtship and dating or whatsoever you can just not know all the details the petty tiny little things about each other until you get married that is when you begin to learn new things coming up every time always know that marriage is a process and as the process goes on you are going to be discovering new things you're going to be discovering new behaviors you're going to be discovering habits and things that might have been with the person for ages for his or her entire life and so when these things comes up just know that hey they are just the minutest things in the person they are just the most insignificant things do not make them the priority do not throw too much light and focus on these things that some of them might actually be negative that you may not like do not throw your energy handling and working those petty little things rather throw your energy into making each other better in the marriage so that you know you are growing together but not growing apart but you rather keep growing together and moving forward marriage is definitely a beautiful thing it's a wonderful experience that when you find the right person and you are with him or her the rest of the things or unexpected things that happens they come but not to break the two of you apart but rather to strengthen the bond that you share the third thing I've learned is you should always brace yourself for change once you get married it is the beginning of changes actually not just change but changes numerous changes will happen in your life let me give my life as a typical example when we got married i was living in ghana my husband was living in finland and the biggest change happened when we decided we want to be in the same place before we move in together living together we were still in that stage of like uh honeymoon the time we had together we make the best of it we try to make it fun all the time so it was always lively and amazing and wonderful then we moved in together and the real marriage came in so yes brace yourself for change because as soon as the marriage is cemented and sealed you are just going to be riding a roller coaster a roller coaster of changes and the next change that i'll say happened was also becoming pregnant we're going through the nine month process of pregnancy uh, you know dealing with all that comes with it and then becoming parents now having a newborn dealing with you know sleepless nights waking up to feed taking care of a baby that we have no idea we've never been parents before you know now we are parents we had nobody to help us it was just my husband and myself handling a newborn you know the changes that comes with it the child is growing you see this poor color and you're like oh my god what is happening to my baby changes come all the time you are going to be bombarded with so many changes now that our child is no more a baby and becoming a toddler the change is also here that we have to do child proofing the whole house so when you are even going to the toilet you are pressed you are going to the toilet you have to spend time with that to you know try to open the toilet door because you've got a little toddler in the house that you want to make sure this little angel is safe and sound so you put that child first their well-being first yourself and other things 
come second you just want to make sure that a child is safe you see so these changes would always be coming so my dear you have to brace yourself brace yourself to face the changes that marriage will bring to you i am not sharing this to discourage you i'm sharing them all to make your mind ready to prepare you as you are out there looking for love and potentially marriage i hope that you find some wisdom in this video the next thing i've also learned is communication is key to making your marriage successful enjoyable sweet beautiful and even very convenient in the challenging moments of your marriage marriage is a lot it brings so much pressure sometimes stress sometimes challenges sometimes difficulties sometimes it also brings the good part the smiles the laughters the joy you know the fun the happiness and most importantly the love these are all things that comes with marriage but once you are married you need to know that communication sharing what is in here and what is in here with your partner not with an outsider but with your partner make your partner your confidant make him the person who you do your petty little gossip with the person whom you share what is on your heart what is in your mind you share with him make your partner the person that you find solace in communicating the most painful the most secretive and things that you feel you know are bothering you within all these things it is your partner that you have to communicate these things to you need to learn how to communicate the proper way to your spouse if it is in a difficult situation where there is something happening in the marriage that you are not happy about open up and share these things with your spouse let him or her know how you feel when he or she knows how you feel that is when they can also know that this is what i am doing that is contributing to how he or she is feeling so i need to work on myself to make it better do not harbor things in your mind never at any point feel like oh he should know how i'm feeling oh she should know how i'm feeling no don't just make assumptions for people remember that you two were raised differently you two were raised in different homes you were brought up in very different ways and there are very different ways that you all communicate even if your partner is not a type that communicates verbally he or she might communicate in a different way you know with gestures with actions with attitude or behavior that would make you feel like no there is something wrong somewhere do not just you know assume things in your mind open up and speak up and if you are the one that cannot speak up act it out so your partner can know that there is something going on that is not right how can i make this right and at any point in time that you feel that you are unable to communicate to your partner you two should sit down and talk about it because that is the moment when things begin to you know start to break apart gradually you see because if you are not able to communicate what you feel it could be that you have some fear that might be holding you back it could be that there is something happening there is something within that you are just not sure of or you've lost trust for the other person so please at any point that you get to and feel i am unable to communicate i cannot talk to my husband or my wife about this thing know that there is something happening that needs to be rectified if you do not make your spouse your best friend then who are you going to make your best friend this is someone you are married to someone you've dedicated your whole life to live with to serve to live under the same roof and be with and grow together with if you do not make him or her your best friend then who else are you going to have as a best friend why would you have somebody else outside of your marriage as a best friend where you can communicate with share petty little secrets with and not your partner i do not understand that so make sure you communicate properly even the most difficult things there are ways you can communicate you know the most difficult things with your partner and he would never even get angry about it i think i should put this together in a different video to share with you so that you all pick this and then use it to help yourselves as well in your relationship and in your marriage the next thing i've learned is the need 
to prioritize your marriage and family. Make your marriage and your family the number one thing. When God comes first, the next important thing is your marriage and your family. You, your spouse and your children, you are the priority. Then comes the extended family as well. When you make each other a priority, you are able to work together as a team and to move forward and to overcome the unexpected challenges and difficulties that may come along the way. When you make your marriage and your family the priority, it helps the other person also have a sense of what? Safety. And it makes the other person also feel much more committed to the marriage and also able to see your commitment to the marriage. It means that whatever is happening, you put each other first before even your, sometimes your personal petty little things. You have to put the other person's need first. You have to see, is this a need or is this a want? Things that are needs that you cannot do without, then you focus on them. And things that are just wants and desires, you know, you, you don't put them before the very important things that need to be done for your marriage to keep growing, for your children to keep growing. For a marriage to be very happy, both of you must prioritize the marriage itself and prioritize your family, yourselves together and your children. Once you put priorities on these things, it makes you see life in a different light. It makes you do things not with selfish motives, but with selflessness. When you prioritize your marriage and your family, you are not going to do things that would go against them. You are not going to do things that will draw them back. You are not going to do things that will put their lives in danger. You are there and you know that they are the topmost priority. They are the most important people in your life. You give it efforts, you give it time, you give it all the resources and everything that it's needed to make it grow. I encourage you to prioritize your marriage and your family. This is one of the most important things that helps sustain a marriage and makes the marriage grow and flourish. To add to the above, manage your fights and differences within. For a marriage to really work, you too must find ways and means to manage the petty little fights that you may have here and there, manage it within. If there is anything happening that you're not happy about, please voice out, speak up in a way that is respectful, a way that is not humiliating, a way that is encouraging, a way that is inspiring actually, to help your spouse see things from your perspective, to help your spouse understand things from the point of view you have, so that it helps both of you and helps the marriage grow. I've come to realize that most marriages break because one or both partners are not communicating, they are not working on their challenges and difficulties within the marriage, but they are finding solace in talking to other people outside the marriage where they get unsolicited advices that would rather go a long way to ruin the marriage rather than talking within, working on, looking for ways and means, putting together workable ideas and routines that would help grow the marriage rather than, you know, break it apart. I cannot remember a time that I had a challenge with my husband that I did not call to tell him this and this and this is what you did that I'm not happy about. I cannot remember a time where he is also feeling a certain way about me or something that I have done that I did not allow him to speak up. I will definitely voice it out and speak about it. And this is not to say that things are not happening in my marriage. Things are happening in my marriage. But what we do is we sit down, deal with it, talk about it, handle it. We brainstorm, we speak, we talk freely to each other so much that there is no way that anything will be going on that I'll keep it away from my husband. I just don't know how. Communication is very, very important. We need to communicate exactly how we feel, exactly how we feel. Just that, communicate it in the right way, 
so you do not hurt the other person. So talking about managing our differences and little fights in marriage within, one of the things that I want to share is the fact that you know I am in an interracial marriage and also come with its own cultural differences, you know, from our upbringing and how we grew up and how we speak, how we think and how we do things. Yeah, knowing that we've got these differences, but working through them, adapting to them, we are always open-minded and learn about each other's culture. There are times that I have to explain to my husband what certain things mean in my culture, what certain words mean, you know, when you speak. There will definitely be differences based on the fact that we are from different backgrounds, different upbringings and different things, you know, that we've known all our lives, even different ways we communicate certain things, how to even show affection in public and other things. All these things are things that were done differently in my culture and differently in my husband's culture. So now that we are together, we need to acknowledge that these differences exist and also find ways to overcome these differences by, you know embracing each other and creating new memories we respect and love each other we support each other in difficult times and we bring each other to the very last point which I'll be mentioning which is building the marriage on God letting God be the foundation of your marriage what are you building your marriage on the foundation on which you build your marriage is very, very important. If you build your marriage on the foundation of Christ, that is a solid foundation that would only make your marriage stand the test of time, stand the test of challenges, difficulties, unexpected winds will blow, but because you've got your faith, holding you firm and strong, you are able to go through it together. The knowledge that you've got God with you, in the marriage with you, helping you through, seeing you through, supporting you through, it's a great relief. It's a great inspiration. It is a great, you know, knowledge to have. It is so inspiring to know that, oh God, we have you in our life, we have you in our marriage. It also helps you to get to a level of, you know, appreciation. You begin to grow in gratitude for what you have and how your marriage is growing. Even in the presence of the challenges, you still find yourself pushing through and working hard to make that marriage work. So what foundation are you building your marriage on? If you are out there looking for love, what foundation are you hoping to build your marriage on? That is the question that I want to leave with you. I want you to think about it. I want you to ponder over it. In the toughest time, what do you hold on to? Who do you call upon? Do you hold on to your faith? Do you hold on to the knowledge that with Christ in your union, everything is possible. With Christ in your marriage, your marriage is going to flourish no matter how discouraging it might look right now. Things will change financially, things will change emotionally, things will change physically, health-wise, things will change and in every aspect, things will change. One thing I've also learned is the need to make time to socialize outside of your marriage. Sometimes you get so stuck in the marriage that you even forget about your friends and people that means much to you. People who you could socialize with in a meaningful way that add some value to you. If you're not careful, you will end up breaking away from some relationships that are great and useful relationships that you used to have before marriage, which you could hold on to and you could actually harness to grow your life, your dreams. Because even though you are married, your dreams, your aspirations, and whoever you are is still who you are. And what you would want to do is to make that part of you even better, but not dwindle 
you see so make time to still socialize with the friends and families and people that you have and also make time to be able to go out there just you two or just yourself you know to have some good time because sometimes once you begin having children and the family begins growing the focus now comes all on the children and you ignore each other's needs i mean all the needs make time to you know revive that joy we used to feel the petty little things you used to do that you know kept you going and kept the relationship alive and always happy and joyous bring these things back bring those times back into the marriage and make the marriage enjoyable so guys i hope that this video is going a long way to inspire you to guide you if you are already on the journey of marriage or you are still looking to find love and get into marriage i hope that my experiences and the lessons that i've learned which i've shared with you in this video would be an encouragement and inspiration to guide your path as you look for love and as you also step into the arena of marriage i wish you the very best and if you are new here i encourage you to please subscribe to this channel do not forget to also click on the notification bell so that anytime i have a new video up you will be the first to receive an alert from me thank you all so much for your time and i'll see you in my next video bye